I would uh, I would just like to thank number one uh, Ryan Lex and and uh, Sam West for being here for my Bexus and give us some some really great insight into this next gen uh, MIGA product that we're really excited about. Uh, we're one of a, a few uh, IMOs that have been selected to uh, represent this product, and uh, you know we just want to share that with you. And uh, so today, what we're going to do is we're going to first kind of talk about the why of this product. Like, you know, why, why is it why is it important today, right? And then we'll get into uh, the uh, uh, the details of the product with Ryan and Sam. And then uh, in the end, I'm going to kind of follow up with some marketing programs, some DIY programs you guys can use on your own to start generating business. Also learn how, you know, get some tips on how to sell my guys. Uh, I think you're going to find that stuff really useful. But uh, so we do also have our very own Eric Lindewall here. He's uh, one of our annuity VPs. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just feel like he's just a, a really well-rounded uh, uh, financial professional that uh, is, uh, is going to be really helpful towards the conversation. So uh, let me start off by sharing some of the resources that we, that we have available here at DMI that are related to Ibexis products or the Ibexis product. Here, stand by one second. DMI license agents, they have access to something we call my back office. So, but one thing I wanted to point out here was the uh, IBEXIS resources that we have available. It includes everything from a training deck, agent training deck to, you know, who is IBEXIS, advisor brochure, a rate sheet, uh, and then a number of white papers. And one of the white papers that, uh, that I wanted to point out was our risk premium challenge white paper. And uh, this, the premise of this is that, you know, ultimately, if you look at the CAPE, CAPE ratios and, and the predictions that a lot of economists are making right now, they're projecting that over the next 20 years, they're looking at a 6% average uh, return on investment um, uh, in the market. So right now, we're looking at a product here that has somewhere between five and 5.8% uh, fixed uh, fixed interest. I mean, based on that product not having any risk and the alternative carrying 100% risk, you know, it's a really good argument that you want to figure out how to integrate this into your financial planning. So, um, you know, Brian and Sam, I just wanted to ask you guys what, what you what you think about this. So this, this uh, white paper will be available uh, to those that have access to MBO and they can take a look at that later. But I just wanted to get y'all's thoughts on, uh, on that dynamic that's taking place right now. Sure. Yeah. Can... Oh, good, good, Sam. Yeah, no, so, you know, I think, I think it's a, you know, a great time in the MIGA space, right? You know, with MIGA's consumers right now, they can really take advantage of the rising interest rate environment that we're in and the high rate guarantees that we haven't seen in a couple of decades, right? And, and also specifically to the MIGA Plus that I know we're gonna talk about here in a little bit, but the MIGA Plus, it has additional upside potential built in tied to the performance of the equities markets. But to your point, Glenn, you know, with the CAPE ratio and the CAPE ratio being a lot lower and equity returns here in the near future expected to be lower, it doesn't matter in the MIGA Plus. All the equity markets has to do is be positive 0.01% for a client to, to receive the full index linked rate. So, um, you know, like I said, I, I, I think it's a great time to be in, in the MIGA business, if you will. And even when you look at 60, 40 portfolios, you know, it, it's one of the worst starts ever. And Q2 was the worst quarter ever for a 60, 40 portfolio. And, you know, if you look at baby, baby boomers, which I know producers have a lot of clients that are baby boomers and them specifically, you know, when you have a 60, 40 portfolio, that 40% is supposed to be the protective allocation in, in a debt with a downturn in equities. And they've been burned twice, right? Once in 2007 
and again now in 2022. But but the difference, you know, today is time is no longer on their side to recover. So um, yeah, great time to, to be in the business. And, and I'll turn it over to Ryan yeah. for additional comment. Well, and, and Glenn, it's funny, Sam and I were having this conversation earlier today. And if you look at the market specifically around the CD market, um, you know, some banks, some banks are starting to offer more attractive CD returns. But if you look at the majority of banks in the marketplace right now, the big banks, they're not increasing their CD rates. So for, a, for, for an agent or advisor, now is such a great time to use a MIGA as an asset gathering tool because they're not necessarily getting what they could be getting even at, uh, at, at some of the banks. But if you look at the MIGA market in particular, it is, I mean, as Sam alluded to, and you've talked about, it's on fire right now. I mean, you know, to, to, to look at guaranteed interest rates of over 5%, I mean, you know, five years ago, we were talking about trying to keep it around two, two and a half percent. We, you know, we've doubled this. We've seen the market double in the last five years on what a what a five year MIG is returning. I mean, this, if this isn't a reason for, for a, a producer to be excited about to go gather assets from the bank, I mean, it, I, there's no better time. And to be able to put it into a guaranteed product, right? Um, and, and there's some, there are certainly some great products in the market right now. Um, but again, you know, with these, you're, we're seeing such great opportunity and shorter duration yields, like the three and the five, the three and the five year um, migas. It's, it, it, it's, a, it's a great time to be selling migas. It's a great time to be, you know, to be buying migas as a consumer because the value is is off the chart. And and to your, you know, just thinking about. Um, the comment about risk-free premium here. I mean, the, you're locked in, you're guaranteeing a, a rate of return for a period of time, um, you know, whether it's the three, five or seven year duration. And, and there's, you know, it, it's, it's again, I, I, I think we're, um, we're looking at a unique point in time in the MIGA marketplace. And is there, is it, are you guys, are you guys finding, I mean, as far as uh, lifestyles go and that kind of thing, is there a place uh, for a product like this where, where it's going to be strongest in terms of lifestyle uh, period, or, or it's just, is, is just going to be good for just about anybody? What's, what, what's your, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I think that's an interesting question. Um, I mean, I guess I'll say something like this. I mean, we're, we're looking at inflation rates we haven't seen um in a long long time and um to have to have products in the market that that can help keep up with inflation rates or come close to pacing with inflation that are guaranteed during this hyperinflationary environment um i i would i would argue that this is something that you could find appeal for just about any lifestyle person whether they're you know a pre-retiree up to a retiree that's looking to park for some safe money uh, for a period of time, um, because the amount of uncertainty with inflation right now is is um, is something again we haven't seen since you know late seventies, early eighties. What do you, what do you think, Eric? Well, not to put you on the spot, but what have you been seeing uh, recently with this change in in the MIGA? Uh, uh, yeah, economy? Glenn, it's, it's been uh, an interesting few months, uh, and certainly six months as uh, interest rates have, have risen, um, you know, I, I think interest rates have risen faster than the mindset of the average advisor has evolved mm -hmm. in the way we view these products, right? So this goes back to that risk premium conversation. And, you know, for many of the attendees today, uh, I work with a lot of you and you know, I'm a big fan of analogies. And so the analogy I would use with respect to risk premium is as follows. If I was walking down the street and the street was pretty busy, there was traffic, not crazy busy, but reasonably busy. And, um, and I saw a million dollars sitting in the middle of the street. I might take that chance to run out into traffic to pick up that bag of money. The risk is worth it to me. But if I'm walking down that same street and I see a single dollar bill blow across the street, I'm probably not stepping off the curb because it isn't worth it to me. And so as we've seen interest rates really increase dramatically with MIGAs, um, advisors and clients really have to have a hard conversation about given the forecast for the equity markets, and as Sam mentioned, the really challenging time we're seeing in the fixed income markets, whether it's worth stepping off the curb. So we've really seen a, a lot of folks 
um, that are really looking for alternatives. And again, not just to equities, but to fixed income. Uh, you know, I can raise my hand and say that uh, two weeks ago, I opened my personal statements and I saw what fixed income has done year to date. So folks are out there looking for alternatives. And I think that this uh, product with Ibexis, the unique hybrid structure of it can really help us um, really bridge that gap between you know, what we think we need and quite frankly, what we ought to do given the current market environment. So uh, the risk premium conversation is extraordinarily important, not just for us all as financial professionals to have, but more importantly, find a simple, easy way to articulate that to your clients. It'll help you reallocate more assets and do a better job for those folks in what is really a challenging time. Well, that's awesome. I appreciate that, Eric, that, in, that insight. Um, that I like the parallel. And I think with that, I think we ought to step off the curb, <laughs> step into the street <laughs> and and uh, and talk a little bit about uh, the, the Ibexis Mega Plus. Um, Rex or, 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 or sorry, Lex or Sam? Yeah, I'll go ahead. And, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here with you. Everybody, you see that okay, guys? Yep, looks good. Great. Well, again, let me first off just thank DMI for their partnership. You know, it, it's uh, um, for from my perspective at Ibexis, like we're, you know, we wanted to partner with what I would say are, are, are some of the best organizations in the industry that do the business the right way. Um, and we're excited to have the opportunity to partner with, with DMI, to distribute the MIGA Plus and we're going to just walk through the product just to give you, you know, a high level overview of the product. But before we do that, I thought it would make some sense uh, for me to just share a little bit about, about Ibexis because it's not necessarily a name that's, that's well known in the market yet. Um, but, you know, we can trace our roots back uh, quite some ways. Um, in fact, um, as you'll see throughout, we've got a we've got a long lineage of being in business, just under a different name. In fact, our roots come from Sunset Life, and Sunset Life um, Sunset Life sold to Kansas City Life, and we actually acquired uh, acquired Sunset Life from Kansas City Life earlier this year. And what's really unique about our company is that we are really um, we've got a real, what I would say is a unique story in that a we're coming into market as a strong financially rated company with an a minus rating. Uh, we've got leadership across the board that has been in this business a long time from different companies, from Athene to Apollo to global Atlantic, to name a few. And we've partnered with an asset management partner that is in the space because they're seeing the value that insurance can bring to their portfolio. And so their desire and I'll tell you more about our asset management partner in a second, but their desire is to grow this business for a long time, so much so that they're not investing in our business at Abexis with, uh, with um, private equity money or with a fund. They're actually investing in Ibexis with their partner dollars. So this is the actual financial interest of the, um, of the company itself, of the partners of the company. So we're excited to partner with them. And that, and that company um, is Invest Corp, which we'll talk again, like I said, a little bit more about them in a second. But just where we're at today at Ibexis, we're licensed to do business in 43 states in the District of Columbia. Um, we're current, our, our, the MIGA Plus is currently available for sale in 41 states in the District of Columbia. And we'll share more about those states uh, as Sam goes through the product presentation. Um, but what's unique about us is we actually are building our business from the ground up. We didn't take any legacy distressed assets to manage, which can weigh heavily on, on your investment portfolio. And why is that important? It's important because it allows us to really provide to the consumer the best rate possible in the market. So you'll see what our, our MIGA rates look like. And um, you know, within the next uh, month or two, we'll be launching a fixed indexed annuity as well to complement what we're doing in the annuity marketplace. As I shared with you, we're partnered with InvestCorp. InvestCorp is a forty-plus billion-dollar asset management partner. And if you don't know the name InvestCorp, I'm sure you know some of the brands. Um, if you've ever shopped at Tiffany's, if you've ever bought, some, if you watched House of Gucci and you saw uh, the Gucci story, um, if you've ever uh, pumped gas at the Circle K, or my personal favorite, if you've ever eaten Carvel ice cream, you know the InvestCorp brand. 
Um, they have uh, they've been in uh, business for uh, for almost 50 years, and they've actually taken some of those brands and they had still have ownership stakes in some of them. And some of them they they fixed up and sold off uh, or spun them off as separate businesses. So um, it, it's a great partnership for, for us to have. Again, with that partnership, it gives us access to some great uh, investment strategies um, so we can make sure we're providing the best possible product for your customers. So with that, we want to get into the product now, and I'm going to turn it over to my to my friend and colleague, Sam Wist, to walk us through my plus. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Um, and yeah, just to echo Ryan's comments, I, I'm pumped to have this product live and available for, for all of you working with DMI. And I look forward to working with all of you. Um, the MIGA Plus, and, and we've, we've alluded to it a little bit earlier, but it, it has a both a fixed option and it also has an index linked option, which we'll refer to as the plus bucket. And the plus bucket is really what differentiates this MIGA from anything else in the marketplace currently. So um, let's dive into the details. At its core, the MIGA Plus is, you know, it's, it is similar to other MIGAs in the marketplace, right? It's a great CD or money market alternative that's tax deferred and it credits a fixed interest rate. And, and the rates are on the screen here. Um, what a client will do at the beginning of the term is they'll select their GOP period, the three, five or seven year period that they'd like and you can see the rates on the screen the fixed interest rates the three year is at 510 the five years at 565 and the seven years at 580 those are simple interest rates and we've got the compound equivalent rate there in the parentheses but but if a client wants to they can put a hundred percent of their premium into the fixed rate and get that that fixed rate guarantee for that full three five or seven year term now, you'll also notice the index linked option or the index uh, linked rates, and this corresponds to the plus bucket. And those are 775, 8, and 750. And, and, and how this plus bucket works with these index linked rates is it's performance triggered on the SP 500. So if the SP 500 is positive, on a point-to-point -point basis annually, it only has to be positive 0.01%, a client will get that full index linked rate for whatever premium amount they allocate to the plus bucket, and they can allocate up to 50% to the index linked option. Um, the product, it's up, uh, it'll issue to age 85 on the three and five year. It'll issue up to age 80 on the seven year. Uh, there's no fee whatsoever for this product or any of the features inside of this product, the liquidity or the death benefit. A full death benefit is paid. Um, the full accumulated value is, is paid at death. Uh, contract minimum is 10000 and max is $1.5 million without prior approval. And 10% um, free withdrawals are available starting year two in the contract and and like ryan alluded to you can see the state availability here on the screen for the states that we are in currently so moving forward i, I just want to touch on uh, a couple examples real quick just so that you can see the mechanics behind the product this is a hypothetical three-year mega plus with 100% allocation into the fixed option. They just want that 5.1% rate for three years. And the table of value shows, you know, with an initial $100,000 premium, 5.1% fixed rate, the client would receive 5,100 every year for three years. And at the end of the three year term, they'd have 115,300. So very simple, very straightforward. And in the three year fixed rate, is extremely competitive and it's top of market right now in, in the three year duration. Now the index linked option that I referred to earlier or the plus bucket, um, this is also an example of how this works in action, right? We're looking at the three year as well here. We're assuming a client does a 50-50 blend. They allocate 50,000 to this plus bucket. And, and you can see in the table of values, the first year, right? If we're assuming the S&P 500, it starts at a value of 1,000, it goes to 1,010, so it was positive 1% for the first year. 
because it's positive, a client would be credited 7.75% on the 50,000 they allocated to this plus bucket. So they get an interest credit of 38.75. In year two, we assume that the index is down. It's down three and a half percent. So it's not positive. A client simply, they earn a zero in that year on their plus bucket allocation, but they're still getting their fixed bucket allocation. Um, in, in year three, we're assuming that the index is up 7%. So again, because the index is positive, a client would get the full 775 on $50,000 of premium, which would be 38.75 for an end credit. And then if we put those two together, I just wanna go through a split allocation example. Let's put the fixed bucket and the plus bucket together all in one and we'll do $100,000 initial premium. The graphic on the right-hand side of your screen will outline this. So the, the 50,000, it's earning 5.65 annually for five years. That 50,000 becomes 64,125. And in the plus bucket with the 8% index linked rate, we assume that that index linked rate and the performance trigger on the S&P 500 is positive four out of five years. So that grows to 66,000. If you add those two together, you're at 130, 125 for a yield on a five-year product of 6.02%. And one quite, it, we've gotten a couple of questions um, that I, that I want to just uh, throw out there in case, in case you're thinking of this, right? Um, we assume four out of five positive performance triggers. And a lot of people have asked, okay, how, how often is the S&P 500 positive looking back over time, right? So we look back 100 years, we looked at daily returns, looking every day, looking forward one year, how often is the S&P 500 positive? And it was positive about 76% of the time. So we rounded up here, call it 80%, four out of five, but about 76% of the time, the S&P 500 is going to be positive. Um, another question that we've had a lot with the launch of this product is, can a client reallocate between their fixed bucket and their plus bucket, the index linked rate? Can they reallocate annually? And the answer to that is no. Once they set their allocations at the beginning of the contract, those are set in stone. You can't reallocate, but the trade-off is that both that fixed rate and the index linked rate, both of those are guaranteed for the entire term. You, you don't have to worry about you know, sitting down in a renewal in a year or two in the index linked rate, being a quarter point lower, anything. Both of those are guaranteed for the entire term. And then I just want to touch on, uh, touch on the withdrawals, 10% free withdrawals starting year two. Um, one nice thing about this too, if you do a split ticket or a split allocation, client producer, you can actually sit down and you can decide which bucket you'd like the withdrawals to come out of. Um, so you can make that election. Um, at the end of the contract, the, um, you can renew the contract if you'd like. You can make a full or partial withdrawal or transfer the money elsewhere. You can also annuitize the contract under one of the available annuitization options. If you don't do anything, if nothing happens, um, the contract will renew and uh, it'll renew into the same term and the same uh, fixed and plus bucket allocations. And then lastly, just want to touch on the waivers. There are waivers available, no added cost. There's an extended care waiver, which is basically confinement to a nursing home or hospital for 90 consecutive days. You can exercise that and also a terminal illness waiver um, if you have clients that have a... Um, a, they have an expected death within the next 12 months, they can, they can exercise that terminal illness waiver and, and receive their full account value at that time. So um, I know we covered a lot. We went through the product really quickly. Um, let us know any questions. And I'll turn it back over to Ryan to, to, to wrap things up with product. Yeah, thanks, Sam. And, and I'll just say this before we turn it back to DMI, our friends at DMI, to you, Glenn. Um, you know, again, it, at its core, and just like we talked about with MAGA, with MAGA Plus, I mean, it, it has the same, uh, the first three in particular, you know, principal protection, guaranteed interest rates, and tax deferral like you find in any MAGA. We've got liquidity built into the product. There's no additional fee or cost for that. That's built into the product. 
But as Sam shared, and he talked about that plus bucket, right? That idea for additional upside potential with the index linked option um, is, is obviously unique in the space. And just kind of going back full circle uh, to, you know, Glenn, what we were talking about earlier, um, this is a great opportunity to park and have some risk-free, some some risk-free growth uh, on on your uh, on your client's money. Um, we think that we think that we've got a product here that, uh, in addition to having the high fixed rates in the fixed bucket, um, if they want to put some money into that plus bucket, it can really take advantage of where the market sits today. So, uh, with that, thank you very much. Um, I will stop sharing my screen and turn it back over to you, Glenn. Sounds good. Uh, hey, I, I really appreciate you guys. And, uh, you know, I wonder, is is there anything you guys want to talk about regarding like uh, simple versus compound interest or uh, or any of the other white papers that you have? Um, uh, I don't know if there's anything additional you want to mention or maybe just a, some additional perspective on the on the product in today's economy. I'll let Sam talk about Sam. Sam actually put together a great white paper that I think you have available on your on your uh, marketing materials, Glenn. I'll let Sam talk about simple versus compound. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Glenn, for teeing that up. Uh, yeah, we do have a couple white papers out there, um, but you know, simple versus compound. And, and I know we were sort of unique in coming out with a simple interest product um, in the migrant world, right? Most products are compound interest. And, um, you know, I, I, I do think simple interest has its advantages, right? Like, like if you were to look at, and the white paper goes through this, but if you were to look at two rate equivalent products, a simple interest rate and a compound interest rate, and what I mean by rate equivalent is at the end of the five-year term, let's say, they're rate equivalent, so the accumulated value is the same at the end of the five-year term, right? But with simple interest, right, like if you have, a client who's utilizing the MIGA for income purposes and they're scraping the interest off the top in a simple interest product, you're actually better off because the simple interest is higher than the compound interest rate, right? So because you're taking the income every year, that compound equivalent product, you, you negate the compounding effect and you actually get more income in the simple interest product. So I think it has an advantage there. And then also, in a simple interest product compared to a compound interest product, all throughout the term, the three, five, or seven-year term, basically till the very end of the contract, the simple interest is going to have a higher accumulated value. So what does that mean? That means um, a higher death benefit if there's a waiver, right, a terminal illness or confinement waiver, those waivers are going to be uh, higher amounts all through the contract. So um, yeah, the, 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 I, again, I think, you know, there, there's advantages to both, but I think don't overlook simple interest when it comes to the MIGA space. That's great. I appreciate the response. You, you guys make some great uh, conceptual material that helps to uh, helps us to understand the, the product within the scope of like the real world, you know? So uh, we do have, a, we do have a question, uh, uh, I believe from Ellis. Ellis, I'm going to give you uh, the, the mic, I just unmuted you or, or gave you uh, audio capability. Did you have a question? Sam, can you hear me right now? I can, yep. Yes, uh, when you were talking about sitting down with your advisor and choosing whether you take the earnings from the mega side or the guaranteed side, you gave the impression that it had to be one or the other. It, it can, of course, be both. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. You bet. Thanks, Ellis. Appreciate it. Um, I don't see anything in the chat or the Q and A. Did, did anybody have any questions? Um, what I'm going to do is just quickly go over some marketing materials that I think you guys might be really interested in. Um, so uh, be thinking about your questions if you have them, we'll come back and we'll ask again. But uh, here, stand by one second. Uh, so obviously if you haven't sold MIGAs in the past, uh, you could probably benefit from a couple of the campaigns we've put together. The DMI marketing team has done a great job 
Um, not trying to toot my own horn, but I, I do have a really good team. And uh, can can you guys see that? Right now I'm on the Abexis resource page. What I'm gonna do is jump over to uh, our MIGA manual. So uh, here we just kind of break down uh, wh where we're at in the current economy and then the, the role that MIGA can play there. So kind of set up, you know, what is a MIGA? Uh, why consider it now? We talk about CD rates, we talk about bonds, we talk about the S&P, uh, and we're actually working on a consumer-facing version of this, which won't be a whole lot different than this one, but we just want to be sure that anything that we put out is completely compliant. So this is compliant from a financial uh, professional perspective here. Uh, we also have a, a case study uh, in this document and uh, talk about carrier ratings, access to funds. Uh, it's a really useful document. Uh, I would recommend requesting that. Declan can help you with that, uh, getting access to that if you're not already licensed with us. If you're licensed with us, you can just go into my back office and get this under uh, my resources. But then also to take it to the next level, we've got a complete campaign, which is really it's a to do it yourself campaign where we give you everything you need to promote your own webinar. You can make it a sem seminar if you like, um, but we built this as, as a webinar type uh, uh, deliverable. So we'll basically give you all the how to's you need. This is a five week program. So if we go into week five, you're gonna see, okay, here's the presentation. Here's the role of FIAs and MIGAs. Uh, and that's going to set up kind of like in the MIGA manual where we're at today and where you can go with FIAs and MIGAs and the role it might play in your financial planning, right? So how do you get people to the webinar? We've made it really easy for you. So we've got broken out by week, uh, a sequence of an email, a social post, and another email. We find that sequence just works generally. Uh, from a marketing perspective. So, uh, and uh, all you have to do is cut and paste the copy that's in this here, then this Word file. You can, if you click on this, it's going to download to your browser. And then we're also, you've also got a uh, call to action or a, a flyer that can be embedded inside your, your email. So basically all you're doing is you're cutting and pasting the copy and the call to action into your email client whether you use, you're using a complicated CRM or you're just using Outlook, it's going to work no matter what. So it's, it's really simple to deploy. Um, we also have like in week two, for example, here we have a, a webinar invitation uh, that will be specific to you. All of this is completely customizable to you. Everybody's different. Everybody's got their own logo. Everybody's got their own contact information. So we had to make this customizable, everything. Uh, but uh, but it's really straightforward. Uh, you know, if you have any questions about this, uh, I'm able to help answer questions. Our VPs can answer questions about it. Uh, Declan can help out. But uh, it's a really valuable resource. We've also got additional webinar promotions in here, some helpful tips and actually even follow up. So even after, after your webinar is done, we give you some recommendations on, hey, how do you talk to people that registered but didn't attend or people that attended but didn't make an appointment, but people that attended and did make an appointment. Um, it's all there for you. Uh, but anyway, I, I think that that's really all I wanted to cover. Um, and I guess, again, I'll just take it back to, uh, the crew here and see if anybody had any questions on anything we've discussed. Declan, I, I don't see anything in the chat or any hands raised or anything. I think, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, Eric. Eric. You, know, you knew you weren't going to get all the way through without me speaking again. Um, I Please think that uh, I, I got so excited when I was watching uh, Sam walk through the mechanics of the product that I just wanted to reiterate something for everyone here. We, you know, we've talked a little bit about, or a lot about the how today, how the product works. Um, and I think sometimes advisors, 
focus on the how when they're talking to their clients. Clients don't buy based on how. They buy based on why, right? And the why is that risk premium conversation. So just to reiterate that and, and why I got excited was when I saw Sam's blended approach and the average return over five years was 6.02. I'd encourage everybody to download that white paper from the DMI, my back office on risk premium. You will learn that the forecast that we used in some of the conversations were from uh, Dr. Robert Schiller. Now he only won a Nobel prize for his, uh, his methodology. So, you know, that's pretty smart in my book, but folks, Equity market uh, uh, forecasts are six, seven percent over the next five to ten years. Articulate that to your clients. Spend more time on the why than the how. Explain to them why it makes sense to use a product like the Mega Plus in today's space. Gain agreement that the forecasts are correct, and focus on the why. Why would you step off the curb? I think it's vitally important that people understand the why. So that would be my, uh, my takeaway and admonition to everyone on, on, the, on, the, uh, on the webinar today. Download that white paper piece and get real comfortable with it. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And then when you feel like you're, you're, you're ready to churn and burn, uh, use the, that MAGA manual and the campaign that we have laid out for you. Take it to the street and get off the curb, you know? Um, so Eric, appreciate the thoughts. Ryan and uh, Sam, hey, it's it's great to be partnering with you guys. Um, so much more to come. I'm looking forward to the future with you guys. Um, Declan, thanks for helping out as always. And everybody on this uh, webinar, appreciate you being here. And please reach out to us with any questions you have. Declan's here to help. Eric's here to help. All of our VPs are here to help. So thanks, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Have a good one. Thank you. Be Thanks safe. for having us on. Thanks so much, guys.